Hello everyone, this is Eroica, and thanks so much for stopping by for another video. It has been a long and difficult journey, one fraught with challenges, the application of new tactics, and quite a bit of frustration. Aside from all that, I finally made it to the end of the challenge mode version of the campaign with three-star victories in every dungeon. The culmination of this work puts me in front of the final boss, and in this video I'll show you how to take this guy down and end his tyranny once and for all. For this dungeon, I chose the Furnace as a tank, Black Smoke for heals, Augustus as alternate healer and damage, and Igneous the Mad for DPS. All of my heroes are 6-starred and fully ascended, except for the Furnace, which is only a 4-star hero. None of them have applied blessings. The Furnace was chosen as a tank because of his immunity to every status in the game. There are quite a few afflictions which can be placed upon your heroes, including poison and disease. These afflictions can wreak havoc on your team and place quite a bit of pressure on your healers. With his basic attack having a chance to burn every enemy on the platform, his legacy of flame trait boosting Igneous' attacks, as well as his taunt which boosts fire damage by 35%, the damage potential is high when these two are paired. Additionally, his Abs of Steel trait keeps the damage manageable, and his Combustion ability helps keep some of the enemy attacks on constant cooldown. You should be aware that when using the Furnace, there is a risk of explosion from his Under Pressure ability. The risk is not paying attention to the pressure meter as he tanks the entire dungeon, which will cause the Furnace to explode and burn your team if the pressure gets too high. This can happen automatically or when the ability is used. With the silent effect cast by the webcaps, this can render your healer useless in any attempt to heal through it. It is best to be proactive and use that ability whenever possible to keep the pressure down and under control. Because the furnace is unable to be healed by any other healer except Black Smoke, it was required to bring him along. You should know that his role here is dedicated to ensuring the survival of the furnace and he will not have any turns to squander beyond an isolated attack. Every turn with him will be a tactical calculation in ensuring that you are prepared for any upcoming damage and that you are setting yourself up for the next heal. You will constantly be toggling his Dwarven EMT heal, which does heal the Furnace, in conjunction with his Energy Rune ability. The Dwarven EMT ability has a cooldown of 5 turns and once used should be set up for the next heal by using the Energy Rune ability which infuses the hero it is cast upon with 3 energy. However, it has a 7 turn cooldown and needs to be synced in a fashion where it is used as soon as the Dwarven EMT is cast. This will make the heal available again within 2 turns, thus giving you a heal to use, if necessary, while your Energy Rune ability is on cooldown. You'll repeat this process throughout the entire dungeon. Augustus is brought for supplemental heals to other team members, damage prevention with his Aegis Wall, and whatever DPS he can provide. He is also brought to remove any affliction status which may have been placed on one of your hero members. Augustus also plays a vital role in the boss fight in preventing damage from the boss's pestilent breath attack, which does quite a bit of damage. However, with tactics that will later be discussed in this video, you hopefully will never have to encounter this, but you should be prepared for it. Igneous is brought for his high elemental DPS, which is greatly complemented by the Furnace being part of the group. The Furnace's basic attack has a chance to cast a burn affliction on all enemies simultaneously, which then causes Igneous to have boosted damage against burning targets. Some of the enemies also have a sensitivity to not only the fire component of his attacks, but the mystical quality as well, thus he has a two-fold advantage for DPS. Additionally, his energy drain attack will play a role in the boss fight and provide him with two additional energy to keep his abilities powered. For this dungeon, I brought three energy potions. Because the furnace cannot be healed by conventional means, and you have a supplemental healer for emergencies, I wanted to place my focus in powering my hero's abilities. Since there is only one tank in this composition, it is inevitable that there will be a round which will have to be endured without an active taunt. You will have to decide when the use of a potion is appropriate, but I would recommend saving at least two of these energy potions for the boss fight. You can prepare for this vulnerable round by using Augustus' Aegis Wall, although you may not be able to do this for every instance in which it occurs. As a prophylactic measure, you could cast the Aegis Wall ability the very first time it becomes available. The bubble will last the entire duration of the dungeon until that hero is struck. This will leave your non-tanking heroes protected for the duration of the dungeon and protect them in the event a stray attack is used when the taunt is down. Since no AoE attacks are noted until the boss fight, this countermeasure should serve you well. 
This dungeon has a recommended level of 72, and if your heroes are lower than the current level of 70, you may encounter an increased level of difficulty in completing this dungeon. This dungeon has five platforms which must be cleared prior to reaching the boss. However, the noted fifth platform is part of the boss fight and consists of five saplings which must be destroyed. The previous four platforms contain trash mobs which will be populated by Shadow Sync Reapers, the Zeta Justicar, and the Shrieking Webcaps. The recommended kill order for the platform is Webcaps, Reapers, and then Justicars. The Webcaps have the ability to silence your heroes which could prevent vital heals from being cast. They are typically weak and should be fairly easy to remove. The Reapers and Justicars can almost be taken out simultaneously with AoE attacks from Igneous or the Furnace's basic attack. While the Reapers don't typically do a lot of damage, they are low in HP and should be taken out early to reduce the number of attacks against your team. The Justicars do have a taunt ability and have a 2 times damage multiplier against taunting targets. Depending on how many of this type of enemy is on your platform, you will need to have a heal ready to counter the damage against your tank. Aside from the fifth platform, which will always be five saplings, the other four platforms can be any mix of the previously mentioned trash mobs. As you navigate the platforms, ensure that you are following the recommended kill order as best as possible. Since there are enemies that have the ability to taunt, you may not be able to follow this exactly as prescribed, but do what you can when faced with being taunted away from your preferred target. When you reach the fifth platform, the inbound damage is significantly reduced towards the furnace, and you may only have to heal just once. This is a good time to charge up your abilities for the incoming boss fight. The danger on this platform is the loss of the taunt, which will expose your heroes to the possibility of being afflicted with poison. If this happens, it will be difficult to recover, and almost assuredly you will lose the ability for a 3-star victory. Make sure you keep an eye on the taunt and consider using a potion to bring it back into effect. Once you reach the final boss, tactics will come into play as you single tank this fight. The most damaging aspect of this battle is the Pestilent Breath attack, which will do significant damage to your team. The Furnace's Combustion attack, which resets all of the target's abilities cooldown to their maximum, coupled with Igneous's Energy Drain, will almost ensure that this devastating attack does not occur. It is recommended that you use these spells in tandem with each other. Use the Furnace's Combustion ability after you're settled into tanking, meaning you have a taunt going and verifying that his pressure gauge can take a few rounds of hits. After two to three rounds, use Igneous's Energy Drain ability to continue to stall the boss's abilities. Maintain this rotation correctly, and the boss should be prevented from ever casting this attack. Pestilent Breath aside, the only attack you should have to contend with is a basic attack where he attempts to poison the tank. Since the Furnace cannot be afflicted with this debuff, and it only does a small amount of damage, it is of little consequence unless there is no active taunt. This poison ability will do significant damage to one of your other heroes and will more than likely result in a wipe. As a preventative measure, you can cast Augustus' Aegis Wall to remain in place in the event the taunt falls off and you are out of potions. Don't forget that as long as you have a heal available from Black Smoke, you can cast his Energy Rune ability on Augustus so that the Aegis Wall spell will become available sooner. At approximately 35% health, the boss will cast his Wall of Thorns ability. This attack will produce four level 70 saplings, which all have the ability to retaliate. They do not do very much damage and are more of a nuisance than a threat as long as your taunt is active. It is advised that you take them out organically and that you can use the Furnace's basic attack or Igneous's Wall of Fire ability to attempt to burn the boss and consequently the saplings as well. Do not waste turns trying to remove them as he will simply create more. Focus your DPS on the boss while maintaining your heals and protective measures. Additionally, keep draining the boss's energy and be prepared for a round when your taunt fades. Do this and you should be trimming this mighty oak into the weak little sampling that lies beneath in no time flat. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you found the video informative. If you did, make sure you give the subscribe button a click so you can be notified when my next video comes out. Let me know what worked for you by sending me a screenshot using the direct message feature in Instagram. You can also follow me on Twitter for game updates, new hero releases, tactics, and other information. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you at the next video.